today we're gonna talk about weighted averages. Let's start with normal, regular averages that we know. Uh, full disclosure, I know nothing about cars. Suppose we're talking about used cars, and we have these four used cars here. Uh, we have a Toyota, a Honda, a Chevy, and a Ford, and these are the values of the cars. And the question is, what is the average value of these four cars? The regular average works by, well, we're gonna add all these numbers, and then when we're done, we're gonna divide that sum by the number of numbers added, which is four in this case. So we're gonna add, so it's 54,000, and we divide it by four. So what we got is that the average value is 13,500 bucks. That sort of makes sense. The average, for better or worse, is always between the greatest and the lowest, lowest number. The greatest number is 20,000, the lowest number is 9,000, so 13,500 13, is a reasonable answer for the average value. Okay, now this is where the example becomes even more forced, but let's just roll with it for the sake of the numbers. Suppose we are in a large dealership where we have lots of cars, we have five Toyotas, each of them worth 11,000, three Hondas, each of them worth 20,000, 10 Chevys, each of them worth 14,000, and 12 Fords, each of them worth of 9,000. The question is the same, what is the average value of these cars? Well, we have a lot of cars. How many cars do we have? We have, this is 8, 20, we have 30 cars. So we're going to have to add up 30 numbers, and then when we're done, we have to divide by 30. So it's a regular average, it's just some numbers in the average are identical. 5 times 11,000 is 55,000. That is the volume of the five Toyotas. The volume of the Hondas would be 60,000. The Chevys, 140,000. And the Fords, 108,000. We simply multiplied 9,000 by 12. Okay. We get the total volume of all 30 cars. If we just add these, let's do that. So these 30 cars all together are worth $363,000. The average value is going to be when we divide this by 30. But before we do that, let me write out the computation because even though we don't need it here, but if you use the written notation, it's revealing. It's helpful. So let's just take the time to do that. 5 times 11,000 plus 3 times 20,000 plus 10 times 14,000 plus 12 times 9,000 divided by 30. So this long numerator is our 363,000, right? This is the 50, this is the 55,000, this is the 60,000, this is the 140,000 and so on. And so our next line is gonna be 363,000 divided by 30. And so it looks like our answer is 12,100. That would be the average volume of these cars. This regular average kind of flattens out the volume. If you had 30 identical cars worth of the same volume, this is how much each should, should be worth of. If we look at the number, it's kind of on the low side, but it's still possible because it's between 9,000 and 20,000. But notice that we are much closer to the newer number. That's because these uh, most expensive car, we don't have a lot of them. So a lot of the data is kind of on the bottom and that's why we got this, uh, this average. Now let's look at another example. In the second example, we're still dealing with 30 cars, right? But if you notice, the distribution is different. Now we have a whole lot of expensive cars. We have 25 of the 30 is the most expensive. So walking into the problem, we should have the suspicion that this average is gonna be much higher than the one we got before. 11,000 plus 25 times 20,000 plus 14,000 plus 3 times 9,000. And when we're done adding all this, we're going to divide it by 30. We are adding 11,000, 500,000, 14,000, and 27,000. So we add. So 552,000 is the volume of all these cars. Notice how much of the volume is being contributed by the car that's worth 20,000. Going back to our computation, 552,000. So now we got the average volume to be 18,400. If 
if you look at the previous one, where the average value was, I'm going to put it here, 12,100. We had a nice distribution, but there was a lot of cars on the, on the less expensive side. And in this other example, the average was 18,400. And we had the same number of cars, but this time it was heavy on the more expensive. These were all regular averages. So let's start with weighted average. Suppose we're taking a class. These are called the weights. Basically, this is how we determine how heavy we want a grade to count. We have just four different numbers, but we're not gonna add and divide by four because we want some numbers to matter more, to contribute more to the average. And that is usually expressed in percent. It's the same as per cent. Cent means 100 per means per, right? 20% for the first exam, 40% for the second, 30% for all the quizzes, and 10% for the homework. What is your weighted average? Imagine now that we took not four, but 100 numbers. So we're going to compute the average out of 100 grades where 20 of them is 72, 40 of them is 88, 30 of them is 79, and 10 of them is 92. And this is, here is where we can count how many exams we have. So when we add these four numbers, I'm getting 8,250. And then when we divide by 100, we get 82.5. If, if these were your results, you're probably getting a B. Your average is 82.5 out of 100. All right, let's look at this notation again. Recall that when we add two fractions, then we usually write them with a common denominator. That can work backwards too. This long, long expression can be thought of as 20 times 72 over 100 plus 40 times 88 over 100 plus 30 times 79 over 100 plus 10 times 92 over 100. Notice this number here, 20 over 100. That's the number that's multiplying 72. Well, 20 over 100 is 20%. And similarly, here is 40%, here is 30%, here is 10%. We could get the correct answer if we just enter, just multiply 20% by 72. Well, 20% as a decimal is 0.2. 40% as a decimal. You can use percentages, but this is the fastest way to punch it in the calculator nothing to divide by, right? The division was absorbed in these percentages. And basically we just multiply this by this, this by this, this by this, this by this, and then we add. We're gonna get the same 82.5. You could say right now, why didn't you start with that? Why didn't you just say multiply these two, multiply these two, these two, these two, and add? That's much shorter than what we just went through. Well, the reason I'm telling you where these things are coming from, because then it's easier to adjust things. For example, suppose that the last exam, exam three, didn't happen yet. What is our average? If I just told you multiply this by that, this by that, this by that, and this by that, you would be stuck. But let's instead go the long way. Let's imagine that we have 20 times the number 71, 30 times the number 80, and 10 times the number 95. And let's take the average of it. 10 times 48, 20 times 71, skip. The last exam didn't happen yet, 30 times 80, and finally, 10 times 95. What number do we divide by? Well, how many numbers are we adding? We have 30 plus 30, 60, 70 numbers, right? Because 30 of them are not known yet. We will know what the weighted average is now if we divide by the correct number, 70. So you see, we don't have that 10%, 20%, because now we're dividing through by 70. Now you know what to do if you have to take the weighted average where the weights are given, but they don't add up to 100%. One partial result is going to be important, and that's the sum in the numerator. 5,250 is what I get. That means that given this data, we are at 75%. One question we can ask, okay, so what do we have to do to get an A in this class? Is it even possible? To find it out, we're just going to call this missing number x, and we're going to set up an equation by stating that I want the weighted average of these five numbers to be 90% or more. So how do we do that? We're going to have the same long 10 times 48 plus 20 times 71 
plus 30 times x plus 30 times 80 plus 10 times 95. When we divide that sum by 100, we get 90 or more. This might look like a complicated equation, but it's not that bad. We can wipe out that 100 by multiplying both sides by 100. All these four products went into this. The 100, we got rid of that by a multiplication. So now we just subtract 5,250. And now we're going to divide both sides by 30. Even these results. If we want to get 90% out of this set of results, the exam 3 has to be at least 125 points. That's out of 100. So what this number is telling you that assuming that no score is beyond 100%, A is not possible given these numbers. Okay, let's see what about the B. We couldn't bring up the average to 90, but maybe we can, can bring it up to 80. So let's see that. So then the same long, long equation. So this is the weighted average of the four known number and x. And we want that to be 80 or more. And we're going to solve this equation for x. So our equation becomes 8,000 equals 30x plus 5,250. So that is not going to be an integer. If we want to get an average of 80 or more, we're going to have to write at least 91 and two-thirds of a point. That's 92 percent or more. That means we have to write a sort of a convincing A just to get the B. But B is definitely possible. Right now, our current average is 75 percent. We have figured out that it is impossible to bring up our average to be 90 percent. It's possible but difficult to bring it up to 80 percent. That's sort of an average, 80 or more, you would have to have a final exam score of 92 or higher. If you perform below that, probably you're going to get a C. So the question is now, and I shouldn't, I probably shouldn't even show this to you. How badly can we write the exam and still get away with it? For that, basically, we could see this is sort of the bottom end. Like, we cannot write a lower exam than this. What if I want our average to be just 70%? Sorry, I'm going to write it out again, but it's the same product of those four pairs of numbers yielding for the same 5,250. So very quickly, our equation becomes much shorter. If you want to, I don't know why, would want to someone write a low score final exam. But if you want to get an average of 70% or more, then you have to write at least 59 points on the final exam. Between 59 and 92, you're going to get a C for final grade, and 90, well, let's say 91, and 92 and above, you're going to get a B. That said, I would encourage you to play this game with not just 80, but 79, 78, because it is quite possible that your teacher seeing that the number that pulls down your grade is just an early uh, grade, and the final exam you performed in a way that impresses the teacher, they might give you a B even if your final average isn't 80%, say it's 79 or 77%. One last example. You have been patient with me and watch this whole video almost all of it hang in there because this last one will save you some time now that you know how to compute weighted averages let's see how this applies in in real world for example my students on their online gradebook they're looking at stuff like this this is not your final average because there is stuff missing if you look at the weights 30 50 55 <clears throat> so the question is okay we know how to how to do this from scratch, but maybe there is a quicker way given that the gradebook is already showing a weighted, weighted average. And the answer to that is yes. If you take this 15%, this 15 and all that stuff, that is the same as taking this number to with a weight of 55%. Imagine that you have two more exams to take. Just throw them together, imagine it's one. So how do you have to perform? The equation we write is 55% was already graded and that 55% is 78.91. The other 45% is x. And you make that equal to either 70 if you want a C or 80 if you want a B or 90 if you want an A. Take one unsolicited advice from a math teacher on the other side. When your average is between two grades and you visit your math teacher to ask for the better grade, that is not a good time to ask your teacher what your average is.
this is not really difficult. It's it's a recipe for following a simple recipe. So when you ask for the better grade and also for your average, here is what we math teachers hear. I want the better grade, but I'm going to outsource this easy question to you because I don't even want to bother going after this one. So if you ask your teacher about your average, don't do it when you're asking for a better grade. That's just an advice for me. Thank you for watching.